Hello everyone. You probably made it to this video after taking the what kind of archaeologist are you personality quiz and answered paleoethnobotany. In this video, I will be explaining what paleoethnobotany is and why it is right for you. Paleoethnobotany is similar but slightly different than paleobotany. While both paleobotanists and paleoethnobotanists study ancient plants, paleoethnobotanists specifically study the relationship between ancient plants and ancient humans. Now that we got that out of the way, what exactly is paleoethnobotany? Paleoethnobotany is a subset of environmental archaeology that studies the long history of human interactions with plants in the past. Paleoethnobotanists use archaeological methods of excavation to study and research ancient plant remains. As a discipline, paleoethnobotany has come a long way. Early archaeological reports used to simply catalog long lists of ancient plant species without giving very much thought to interpreting the role these plants played on ancient human lives. Today, paleoethnobotanists study the social, economic, and environmental significance these plants might have had on past cultures. Why is paleoethnobotany important? Plant materials have always been prevalent to human culture and life. Unfortunately, unlike stone, bronze, and iron, plant remains are subject to much quicker decay and are thus harder to find evidence for within the archaeological record. Since plant remains often do not survive the archaeological record, it is up to paleoethnobotanists to uncover these ancient plant species and to link them with their place in human culture. Paleoethnobotanists research how ancient humans used these plant remains, who used them, why they used them, and a number of other ways that plants have interacted with, with past cultures. Plant remains can also be used to reconstruct ancient landscapes so we can better understand the climate and environments that ancient humans lived in. Also, we can better understand how past cultures interacted with their environment, like if they promoted sustainable practices or engaged in lifestyles that led to erosion, deforestation, or pollution. Studying plant domestication and the origins of agriculture are also core elements to paleoethnobotany. So what are plant remains anyway? There are two major types of plant remains that paleoethnobotanists work with, macrobotanical and microbotanical remains. Macrobotanical remains are larger plant materials that have survived the archeological record and can be viewed with the naked eye. They include, but are not limited to, charred seeds, wood, and charcoal. Microbotanical remains consist of smaller plant materials that can only be seen through a high-powered microscope. Microbotanical remains would include fossilized pollen grain, phytoliths, and other fossilized microscopic plant material. A day in the life of a paleoethnobotanist. You likely got paleoethnobotany as your quiz answer because you enjoy gardening and spending time in nature. Being comfortable in the outdoors and getting dirty excavating are important parts of paleoethnobotany that you won't have any problem with as a garden lover. Since you might be working with microbotanical materials, a willingness to also work in a lab setting with a microscope is important. A technique paleoethnobotanists often use during excavation is flotation, as seen in these photos. Flotation is used to separate plant material from other dirt and debris. By washing the excavated material in water, the plant remains, like seeds, are, that are less dense are free to float to the top, so they are much easier to uncover. In addition, it is important for paleoethnobotanists to have good communication and listening skills because they often work with the descendant communities of the culture they are studying. Collaboration and understanding how modern descendant communities interact with plant materials is an important step in trying to understand the roles that plant materials have played on ancient human lives. If paleoethnobotany is something that you really are interested in, the University of Missouri has a renowned paleoethnobotany program and laboratory that was founded by one of the mothers of the subfield, Dr. Deborah Pearsall. For more information and resources about paleoethnobotany, please check the links in the description. Thank you.